Speaker, sir. I would like to know from the Honourable Minister as to how many diet centres are now functioning without principals. Sir, the four, sir. So, what steps are being taken, sir, to ensure that the principles are in place and any timeline set by the government? Uh, steps have been taken to fill up this post of principal. So, uh, very soon we will do it, sir. So, may I know the centres where these principles are not in place? It is Nongpo, Nongstoin, Bagmara, and Dura. So, seeing the centres without principles it really relates to the functioning of the diets and the need for the teacher, teacher training will really suffer. So sir, now without principles also we are seeing that the infrastructure of the diets also not very proper sir. And uh, uh, are there any steps being taken by the, by the government or the department to ensure that the infrastructure of the diets are improved and also upscaled in order to absorb more number of trainees, sir. So, it is the endeavor of the government to see that the proper facilities is there in all the uh, diet center, but uh, there is also a problem of fund. So, we will see to it that uh, proper infrastructure is developed uh, step by step, sir. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, as per the practice of the department, sir, it is seen that whenever blood is required by any of the patients, the blood banks will give the blood. But then they have to, it has to be replaced by the relatives of the patients. Now, so we are seeing a lot many cases where the relatives cannot replace the blood. And this is forcing the patients or the relatives to get the bloods from the open market which is again a crime. So, can this uh, option be explored that the blood be covered under MHIS sir, if it has to be taken from the blood bank? So, now it's not covered under MHIS, sir. What, for the bloods required, sir, we have to give, give to all the other people also who's required the blood, sir. That's why we insist the relative to replace the blood, sir. So the problem is that most of the relatives, some of the relatives rather, they can't get the blood. And this is forcing the relatives to get the blood from the open market, sir. And this is a crime. And uh, under the law, they cannot get the blood from the open market because the relatives are also not in a position to give the blood. So this is forcing them to pay 7,000, 8,000 rupees to black marketeers who are, uh, in, you know, selling blood, so to say. So, sir, this is a serious concern. If, if this can be covered under MHIS, then, sir, it will be a big relief to the patients if they do not have any replacement, sir. I would like to uh, request the Honourable Minister, sir, to kindly explore this uh, option, sir. So, whatever it says to give the blood from the open market, only from the blood donors, sir. Sir, during the discussion, sir, I had raised a very important point, sir, regarding the lifespan of the dam, sir. And uh, in the effort of the government to decongest Shillong, they are also trying, it seems, trying to congest the dam, sir. But then, sir, now there has been uh, no uh, reply made on the uh, effort taken by the government to find a, a different route so that we can avoid going through the dam as the lifespan has uh, expired. And, sir, the critical care units that we had expressed a grave concern the, along the national highways, the Shillong Bypass and the important highways and also the efforts taken by the government or maybe the steps that would be taken by the government to monitor the employment in the central government and offices and institutions. Sir. These three points I request the Honourable Chief Minister sir, to kindly elaborate. Sir, uh so the MSCL had conducted a traffic vibration measurement study on the Umiam concrete dam in October 2012 and through the Central Water and Power Research Station, Pune. 
So the findings indicate that the vibration levels are very low or insignificant and within safe limits. However, the report of the CWPRC suggests that it is not advisable to have continuous vibration due to heavy traffic on such an important structure and had suggested the diversion of traffic on the dam. This will also help in taking up maintenance work of the dam without any hindrance to traffic. So the Dam Safety Rehabilitation Directorate of the Central Water Commission is also of the view that on account of the dam safety issue, an alternative road may be taken up with utmost priority. Sir. So therefore, um, so however, the CWC advised that if the traffic over the dam is to be diverted downstream of the Umiyam Dam, then the level of the new bridge has to be above the maximum water level, which may rise in case of in case of a failure of the dam. So the matter relating to diversion of traffic to the Umiyam was taken up by MECL with the state government. So therefore, sir, uh, uh, as of now, it is definitely an issue that we are concerned with, and uh, I think rightly the honourable member has brought this up. Sir, I remember when I was also opposition of opposition leader in in 2009-10. Sir, I had brought this issue out myself, and I had mentioned about the fact that I thought I saw cracks on the dam, and uh, you know I was I was talking about it. So I I also uh, am in line with what the honourable member is mentioning, and as I said, that is why we are also looking at the possibility of having multiple uh, multiple structures, multiple entry and exit points in the state. And therefore, even the western bypass is becoming one. Uh, we try to look at the VIP road, so-called VIP road. We have uh, discussed in the decongestion uh, meeting uh, that we took ahead of the group of ministers. We discussed about the decongestion there and about how we could have the, uh, the VIP road and how we could invest more in it to ensure that uh, there's, a, there's another linkage uh, to, the, to the city. So, uh, so multiple uh, options have been looked at, but I can assure the minister that I mean, the member that uh, this is another issue that is important to us, and uh, I would. Uh, I would try to uh, expedite this also, and we would uh, examine the possibility of, of look, going into this. So regarding the trauma centers, uh, so it's a long list. Uh, I think even Mr. Uh, Merrillborn, CM, had uh, mentioned about the trauma centers. Uh, and I would just like to mention, and I think so we had a question about the trauma centers. Maybe not today, I'm sorry. But so I'll just read out the trauma centers, how, uh, what the status is right now. The trauma centers have been set up at Shillong Civil Hospital, Nongpo, 100 bedded hospital, and Jowai Civil Hospital and Atura Hospitals. So the trauma center at Shillong Hospital is functional, while the Nongpo 100 bedded and Jowai and Tura are not yet functional due to lack of manpower. So definitely, sir, we will look into this aspect also. Uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India have sanctioned upgradation of trauma centers at Shillong at Nongpo and Tura Civil Hospitals. And uh, the process of calling of tender is underway. So there's upgradation also that is going to take place. Sir. So, so this also issue is uh, something that is being worked into. And if the honorable member requires any more details, sir, as I'd mentioned, I'm, I'm happy to meet him to discuss more in details. Was there any just these two points you mentioned? Regarding the employment in the central government offices and uh, institutions, sir, this is a very important issue, sir. Uh, sir, as I had mentioned uh, earlier, in fact, in the, uh, the um, zero-hour notice that was brought in by our uh, Mr. Edward Nongrum uh, regarding the Meghalaya Rural Bank. Sir, as, it, as mentioned, sir, uh, these, uh, most of these government, uh, central government agencies uh, follow the, the national uh, reservation policy, sir. And uh, it is not an easy task for us to to convince them, but I can assure you, sir, in fact, the finance, uh, the chief secretary has already written in that particular case that if this could be reconsidered. And uh, our efforts are on, but as I said, it's a, it's a policy at the national level, so it's not easy for us to do it. I, I very much appreciate the points mentioned by the member, and it is something that is very sensitive, and it is something that we would also like to uh, urge the government of India to do it, but uh, there is limited uh, control that we have uh, you know, in this issue. But uh, I can assure you that uh, this is an issue that is important to us. And our efforts are on, but uh, I cannot assure the House that it will be done, sir. But uh, we have taken up the issue at the Chief Secretary level, and we will try to push it further, sir. But as I said, it will be not possible for me to give an assurance that this will be done, sir. Thank you.